Hello, we welcome you to the Filmmaking Sucks podcast. Where we tell you about all the mistakes you can make while producing a film. And explain how you can avoid them yourself. And we are your hosts, Manny, Lynn, and Mario. And let's get the ball rolling, shall we? I think so. Did you hear that? I heard it. Oh, okay. Are you sure? I am sure. Because with my 5.1 Dolby digital surround sound stereo, all I heard was, oh, I'm sure. No. (laughs) No. And it looked like you were screaming in person. Yeah. Uh, I guess that's a segue. What is it we're going to be talking about today? Uh, Well, well, first off, again, welcome and welcome back. Yes. Welcome back. We, Thanks for coming back. Yes, we had a um, we had a little bit of a break, and uh, we're back now. We did the Macabre Fair Film Festival. Oh, you don't say. Yes, yes. We were at the Macabre Fair Film Festival, where our new film, Theta States, premiered. I heard and it won some awards. It won a couple of awards. It mm. did. We had, a, we had a good crowd for it. People liked the movie a lot. It's getting some really good reviews. And uh, amongst the five awards that we were nominated for, we won... Audience choice for best feature film, mm-hmm. audience choice for best poster, audi- uh, not audience, excuse me, best soundtrack and best sound. Oh, man. Best sound is the one that made me the happiest, besides, the f- <coughs> besides obviously, the uh, um, audience, audience choice, choice. Because audience choice is like, that's amazing. The, whole, the, you know, the people there loved it. So... Uh, they, in fact, loved it so much that, they, that the few people who missed it and were hearing about it Liked it so much that Macabre Fair set up a second screening of it Sunday night. It was the last film to play at the festival. So that's pretty yeah. sweet. We 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 closed the festival with with it, and we still had thirty or so people in that in that yeah, final room. Yeah, thirty people. You nice. know, considering the fact that at the end of the day, there's only about a hundred. At, at that point of the festival, there was maybe a hundred people there. And they actually all everybody who was in the room watching it missed the awards ceremony. <laughs> yeah, they sat through it instead of going to the instead of going to the audience choice the audience awards. choice award ceremony, which was really great of them. So we thank everybody who was there and watched it. So why was best sound best sound your most yes prized award? That was huge because anybody. Anybody who uh, who's seen Blood Slaughter Massacre knows the sound is atrocious. Uh, yeah, I've heard yeah. worse. I've heard worse, but the sound is pretty bad on it. We had a lot of problems through the course of filming that because um, I was new to film. We were new to really feature filmmaking, okay. um, and we really didn't know what we were doing when it came to sound. Uh, we I had still a, don't know what I'm doing when it comes to sound. All right, by the end of this podcast, I think you're going to have a very good idea of what to do. Okay. Uh, I spent a lot of time researching microphones and sound and recording devices and all this sort of shit. And it was really difficult to kind of pin down and say, well, what is it that I need in a microphone? Specifically because your movie is very big with tone and audio and The general. new one, Theta States, yes. is very big on tone. And, and I'm talking about when we did Blood Slaughter. Oh, I did a oh. lot of research way back then, and I never really found anything that said... This is what this does. This is what that does. You go through the forums and you find a lot of tech heads who are going to talk about all the little specifics of the frequencies that the microphone is going to do and this and that. All these little tiny things that the mic does that you will learn over time. It's going to take you time to get good at the sound before you even worry about that. Kind of like how my mic picked up that car. No, it didn't. Oh, it didn't? Oh, No, it didn't. (laughs) Uh, See, and, this is why... Nope, and that's why... I'm going to yeah. explain exactly why. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I needed I needed a straightforward explanation of what I'm going to need on set and what each micro... What are the differences between the different microphones? So w- I want to get into that today as a kind of one-stop, here's what you need, here's, here's what they do. Now you can go out and with this knowledge, choose a microphone. Based on your budget, I bought a Sennheiser ME67, which at the time was about a seven hundred dollar microphone. Now it costs between five and six hundred, depending where you buy it from. Because I looked, I looked around, and these were the recommendations for this mic. And I said, "All right, this is a great mic. Everybody says it because I'm so frustrated with reading all these different sites and all these different things. You know what? This one comes highly recommended. I'll just buy that and leave it at that. Okay. The truth yeah. is, though, it's an a while. It is an incredible mic." Um, I could find that type of thing in a much lower in a much lower cost. All right, that's a microphone that yeah, everything's going to sound great on it. It really is. Everything's going to sound great, but not everybody can put seven hundred dollars to a single microphone. 
Yeah, or be like me who used onboard audio and everything sounded like I was in a garage yeah. or in a field. I yeah. think that's so that's step one is do not use onboard mic. That was yeah, that was my cautionary tale. Do not <laughs> use onboard audio. No, you you mean the microphone that's built into your camera. Especially my camera because my camera has the worst Actual like Most, rated worst uh, audio of any Canon yeah, that we, was put out in the last couple DSLR of years. We shoot with DSLR cameras, and they all have that little tiny hole on the side that has microphone has a microphone on it. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now: use that microphone simply. Use that simply for the sake of syncing up your your audio. Uh, I'm a uh, I'm very against running audio into your camera. I'm very I don't like it. I don't running hooking your especially after blood slaughter. Our setup for blood slaughter was very complicated and stupid. All right? <laughs> Expensive mic, shitty mixer, I remember. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we had a very expensive microphone and a $30 mixer. <laughs> so, bottleneck of quality right there. And then that mixer was feeding in was feeding a a a, a, a stereo line. A stereo wire, a stereo non-grounded stereo line into a wireless mic pack and that wireless mic pack sent a signal straight to the camera where the camera received that signal through another stereo wire <laughs> all right and between the bottleneck of quality from the microphone to the mixer then the bottleneck of quality from the mixer into the wireless pack and then sending the signal across the room into the camera which now you have pops pings and all different and sorts of and static noise and, and noise that comes in exactly all that crap that comes with wireless contamination big time with yep. wireless yeah. exactly all that stuff that comes with it we ended up with some bad audio you know um it's not the best. We so had I'll, uh, I'll no. admit that. Yeah. that no. it was a pain in the ass to work with too. And that too, because now we have four different items that all need different batteries. So yeah. and the batteries all die at different times because everything takes a different amount of power. And out that's of more the money. Yep. From Lots the of time yep. lost. Yep. So when something dies, like damn, now I gotta I gotta replace the batteries on this. Gotta, less and time two shooting. hours later, you gotta replace the batteries on that. And exactly. A lot less time shooting. So let's try to simplify everybody's pack. First things first, do everything you can to get yourself an, a person on set to run your sound. I'm not even going to talk about a professional sound guy. If you can afford a professional sound guy, save yourself the headache of buying it all and just pay for a pro sound guy. Let him bring his own equipment in pay, and he'll do it all for you. Pay his equipment rate, pay yes. his day rate. Yes, because... If the, you have the money, yes. Mm -hmm. Because something that I, after I learned it myself and I've seen this in plenty of movies... The most important thing on your set during production is your sound. If your movie sounds like crap, no one is going to sit through it. Nope. Period. I don't care how good your script is, how good your actors are, how amazing your cameras look. If your sound sucks... This is the number one flub with independent it. movies. This is it. If your sound sucks, nobody's watching your movie. In my Period. eyes and in most people's eyes, sound being poor is mm -hmm. the... One of arguably, yep. I'll I'll use that word because it's a better way of describing it. Arguably, one of the number one or two mm -hmm. reasons that I've heard people say they stop watching independent yep. movies. It's not oh the acting's bad. Oh that effect was terrible. Oh I see the boom mic in the in the shot. Yeah. No, it's those sound being forgivable. horrible. You, it's forgivable. You can laugh yeah. at it, laugh it off, but bad sound is just annoying. Well, it's also interesting too. We went uh, was, last weekend yep. to just um, in my head. I was just to a lecture at the Rubin Museum. Um, they're running a really cool brainwave series mm -hmm. um, where they're actually getting um, different types of people. Um, experts. experts in their field with a neuroscientist and this previous weekend this one was a neuroscientist and a and, and the editor of the godfather and many other yeah. amazing films and they they really focused on sound yeah. and how sound works and how you perceive sound and he explained that visually you, yeah. you see the equivalent of two octaves of of that's your your visual um, range is visible is the visible light it's about the equivalent of about two octaves of visible light but sound you can hear what it, I think it's eight octaves eight, of sound eight ten and if you have really good hearing I think yeah eight something to like ten that. depending on the that person. is the human range of of sound so this is why sound plays such an important role is the fact that you can hear way more than you can see now we're based on 
we're visually based creatures because our eyes are in front of our face. But if you knew the, um, if you knew if anybody, most people know there's many, many different types of, of visual things. We can't see ultraviolet and, 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 and x-rays and gamma rays. And we can't see this, but when it comes to sound, we can hear a huge spectrum of sound. And the interesting thing that he talked about too, is the different layers of uh, consciousness when it comes to sound, especially um, where a lot of your, under layers of consciousness, the things that kind of just take things in and filter before it gets to your actual like awareness brain. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have technical terms for this, but it was really cool. Um, is that is that you're taking in all these sounds and your brain is filtering them out. So it's almost like when you have bad audio, the under layers of your consciousness are being distracted. Yeah. Yep. I thought you had more. Oh, that was that was my point. Okay, yeah. My the web bad, series, the bad the, audio. The, the bad first audio. episode, the audio was horrendous mm -hmm. because a lot of it got corrupted, mm -hmm. and I had to use a lot of onboard. And there's just so much wind, and you can barely yeah. hear me and the other actor in the scenes. And it's like and really those rough. are the things that your that your consciousness, your brain filters out on your daily life. It filters out the wind <clears throat> blowing. It filters out the sound of the refrigerator in the next room. It filters out the fan that's 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 dun 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 all day long. If you have a fan that makes noise in your apartment, guarantee you don't hear it anymore. It your brain filters it out because it realizes it's an unimportant sound that's always there. Now, when you're on a film set, all that stuff is being picked up by the microphone. And, and now the microphone it's in your it doesn't know the any better. It doesn't, doesn't know any discriminate. It should, shouldn't yeah. filter this it's out. It's just there. Yeah. So once it's playing in your movie and the distance that your microphone is from that sound in the room is suddenly changing and your brain doesn't filter it out because it takes it as important because it's changing in frequency. Sometimes you're closer to the fridge. Sometimes you're farther from the fridge. Sometimes you're right under the fan. Sometimes you're away from the fan. Now that it's changing through the course of the, of the scenes, your brain doesn't filter it out anymore and you hear it and it becomes annoying. And this is why your sound is the most important thing because that fan will take precedence. That sound is going to take precedence over your actor's dialogue because the dialogue is going to be a consistent frequency that person's voice doesn't change in a huge spectrum in the frequency and on the opposite side of that uh filmmakers use annoying sound to distract usually yeah. for jump scare or yep. for some kind of important yeah big scene whether it's horrible or good you know Absolutely. they take they take sound cues to change that like they'll take a bird chirping before a couple kisses or mm -hmm. they'll you know like a kid yeah. laughing in happiness in the background now, if that you bird know. was chirping through the entire scene when you start adding that <laughs> onto the scene for dramatic effect it's no longer now there's just extra freaking birds now there's now there's 200 <laughs> birds in this scene it's like oh my god and it takes away from that dramatic Absolutely. kiss or you know yeah so uh, as we're going to do through this through, through, through this show, we're going to break everything down between pre-production, production, and post-production. All right? The pre-production aspect of this is choosing your microphone and your recording device. For those of you on the cheap, I will give recommendations and you can chime in. You can talk. That's uh, you, we, we'll, we'll, you can talk about which, um, which microphones you would recommend if you want. Well, I'm not at the microphone stage yet. Okay. I will be with this upcoming feature with a, a boom and everything. But mm -hmm. what I've been using for my web series and some other projects, I've been using a recorder actually, which is better than nothing, but it's still not as good as having just yep. a straight up boom mic or microphone. And I've been using a Tascam D60. I think you have, no, 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 I have the 60, the 40. Yeah. And then there's the another, it's equivalent from zoom is the H4N, yep. which you can pick up at most best buys mm -hmm. that they carry. Both of those are between two and $300 each. Yeah. You These can get the task are... cam for 150 now, I think. Is it? Okay. Yeah. They're both handheld recorders. Um, they're about the size of three cell phones stacked on top of each other. Yeah. You know, they're handheld. They have it's about the um, size of an iPhone 7 Plus or a 6 Plus, whatever yeah, the new something iPhone like that. is. Yeah. You know, um they weigh less than a pound. They're handheld. They take um, double A's, mm -hmm. three or four of them. Uh it takes an SD card in the side of it and it, and and three or four uh, four battery, four double A batteries, is it? Yeah, three or four, yeah. I yeah, something like one, that. But. They have stereo microphones on on them. Um be sure to get yourself a windscreen. For that, yes. they have windscreen uh, on top of it. Uh, where is the? 
damn it, it's in the, it's in the bag over there. I was going to say that I, I just got a new windscreen on top of it. That looks really, really cool. It works really, it looks freaking awesome. And, um, it's more than just this muff that sits on top of it. Yeah. It's actually kind of suspended around the microphone, which is really nice. I got it for $20. And now when I upgrade, if I were to get a larger or different models, I can move it onto a different model of of recorder, which is which is what oh, I really nice, like yeah. about it. The it one is, I bought was too small, but yeah, I got, I got an adequate see, one. Like now. the one that the one that the one that like uh, I had for the for the H four N is not going to fit your task cam because the microphones are separate. Yeah. Because this is a little bit larger, a little bit wider in the base. It can sit right on top of it, and it creates a dome around the microphones themselves. So oh, I can nice. put it onto different things. And for twenty dollars, having this interchangeable thing that's also a little bit more durable than just a piece of foam. Very very nice to have. Uh, um, I wish I had grabbed it because it's way over there. It doesn't but yeah, uh, for my recommendation, if you're just starting out, it's better yes. than nothing. Yes, absolutely. Spend the hundred and fifty dollars or two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Get yourself a Tascam or an H4 or mm -hmm. a Zoom because, like, I like I mentioned before, my web series, the first two episodes are really brutal because yeah. I did actually get a sound person mm -hmm. that I still use to this day, and you've used him before, you know, Joe. Uh, he did a great job, but um, the recorder was dropped, not by him. It just fell, like, because somebody, he put it on the table and somebody knocked it over, mm -hmm. and all my sound got corrupted. That sucks. So, like, I had no choice, but we'll discuss a way to fix that later on. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's what happened, and unfortunately, I couldn't recover it, so I used a lot of onboard audio, and it sounds absolutely terrible shitty when yeah. you shoot with onboard audio your camera is too far away from your subjects and it sounds that way and it's very echoey or yep. windy yep. if you're outside you get that really harsh like mm -hmm. hitting of the camera yep. from the wind you don't want so that. what you can do with that um with that recorder seeing as it has microphones on top of it you can take that recorder now you get a boom pole boom poles are expensive boom poles can be very expensive uh me personally i use one you found it on amazon I, uh, amazon or ebay it's called the world's world's light uh, the world's cheapest carbon fiber boom pole like that's what it's called when you search for it. You'll find it. It's about a hundred to hundred and ten dollars. It's very light. There are much more expensive carbon fiber boom poles that are way lighter than this that feel like holding a feather. Okay, but this lightweightness, of, you know, the white lightweightness of this boom pole is very important. All right, I see a lot of people five talk about are lower usually. five pounds. This thing weighs half a pound. Oh, and man. it will exp and it will expand to about nine feet. It is a half a pound. My microphone itself weighs more than the entire pole. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, and that's the microphone without a battery inside of it. And I'll explain that too. Uh, get yourself. You can. Uh, you want. You want very light because you're going to have somebody holding this over their head. Theoretically, for hours on end through the course of a day, up down, you don't want anything heavy. Or if they're underneath the sub the the scene, they have to be in an awkward position most of the time, yeah. or kneeling down, yeah. holding. You the want pole. something very light that's not gonna that's not gonna weigh on your arms. You know, it's just gonna be the state of holding your arms. How long can you hold your arm up over your head? Is really all it's gonna be. It's gonna be reliant upon. Um, so now here, I'm just gonna interject because I know nothing about sound, and I have no problem that admitting that. <laughs> Um, but just for the beginners out there, I just want to make sure that we all understand how this works. Um, a microphone does not record. No. So you need to plug it into a recorder. Well, that's well, that's the thing. This recorder has microphone on it. Right. So yeah, it I mean, is both. It's in, both. It's a yes. microphone and so a recorder. So this is a good place to start from. No. Yeah. Really start. If you are dirt cheap, get this. If you really have no money to make your film, get one of these handheld recorders. They have, have a microphones on them. This is yeah. where we start going into it. Yes. Yeah. It, it, yeah, we'll get into a little bit higher of a, a little bit more of a budget in a second, but that's where we're going to start with. Bare bones, you need this bare minimum. Uh, All right. My you recommendations are Tascam or H or yes. an H4N. These right? these are these are the basic ones that most filmmakers out most indie filmmakers are using. They really, a lot of them are using the, yeah. one of these two models. Um, so uh, again, carbon fiber boom pole is going to, uh, that, that thing's going to cost you about $100. You can get even cheaper than that. Get yourself a monopod. You can get a monopod with a screw on head for about $15 and you can screw it onto the back of the recorder itself and hold the entire recorder over your piece. Now again, this is weight. It's a little heavier, but if you're talking budget, then this is the type of thing that you're, that you're going to have to start out with. You take that and you hold it up over that 
and you get yourself a pair of headphones with a good 12 foot wire running off of it so this way you can monitor the sound and that is your bare minimum if you cannot do that your sound is going to suck badly period it's gonna suck your sound's not gonna be great even with that but it's better than like i said it's better than nothing. yes uh you're what you uh, we'll get into we'll get into how it's gonna suck when we get into the production aspect all right right now we're going to start pre-production so let's move into so microphones that's the cheap themselves. model that's so the now cheapest we go next, thing. so next now we step. have the recorder all right you can totally use this recorder now we're going to talk about adding a microphone to it you have two different types of microphone uh, varieties out there you have dynamic and condensers dynamic microphones are what we're using right now it's the typical microphone you see on a stage that a singer is holding with a wire with a wire coming out of it all right the dynamic microphone um really only works in close proximity. I'm going to move away from the microphone and everybody's going to hear how I suddenly disappear. I'm a foot from the microphone here. And now I'm about three inches from it. Yes. And you hear the difference here. This this is not good for um, a film. on set sound. Yeah. You know, as soon as you move away from you can't hear anything. You know, that's it. So you don't want this type of microphone for your set unless... You're being very close. This is the type of microphone that you use for handheld interviews. You hold it and direct it. Okay? This is what your weathermen are using when they're, yes, uh, they're live on because, scene. Yes, because of the fact that once you get away from the microphone, it's not picking up any of that sound. It's a very close range that it's going to pick up. So when, the, when, when your weathermen are out there in the rain and in the snow and there's traffic all around them, you don't hear any of that stuff because it's not picking up a far range of, of it's condensing it's close. not no it's not condensing that's it's not it's just uh, it's range is condensed oh okay it's range is condensed uh so that's your dynamic microphone you don't want this on set because you need to be very close we actually shot a short with one of these microphones <laughs> we did we shot the all pair with this microphone as a test oh, yeah. wow yeah and we did have to do some yeah. post to get the sound back up Mm. Now, the benefit of it was there wasn't too much background noise either, although unfortunately being far away, once you're far away from the microphone, all the sounds in the room blend into one. So when you make some, when you make it louder, everything gets louder. Yeah. All right. So dynamic microphones is not something you want as your boom mic. Okay. Uh, they also call them shotgun microphones. Now what we're talking about, we're going to move into the di into uh, uh, condenser microphones. These are considered, a shotgun microphone is something that they always call, you need a shotgun, you need a shotgun. Essentially, any microphone, any of those long barrel microphones, that's a shotgun. And they call You're them shotguns? Why? Because they look like shotguns. <laughs> Because it, they look, it looks it's a common it, misconception because people think the holding the boom mic like a shotgun is why they call them shotgun it, microphones. It looks, it, not. it looks like the barrel of a shotgun. That's it. It's a long microphone with the with, with with the mic at the end and a whole long barrel. And see, and this is the type of thing when I was doing the research, I'm hearing all these different people talking about all the things that are happening inside that microphone. And that gets very confusing if you're not a tech person. It gets very confusing, all the little things that are happening inside. You don't need that right off the bat. That's something that your sound person, your, your post sound person is going to need and worry about when you have money to worry yeah. about that sort of thing. You, we're not talking that. We're talking, let's get this done, all right? So we're going to move into condenser microphones. Condenser microphones are more expensive. They, they get very expensive, but they don't have to be expensive. You can find cheaper ones. Uh, generally, they will use phantom power or battery. Phantom power, as she asked me when I was, when I was working on this, uh, Lynn was wondering, what is phantom power? Mm -hmm. Phantom power is uh, basically the recorder itself will send power to the microphone to run it. The microphone needs a separate charge of electricity to work. All right. <coughs> and phantom power is your recorder powering the mic. All right. Okay. Yeah. Most of these condenser microphones have a separate battery capsule. So you don't need the phantom power, but sometimes that battery is still not enough power to run the mic and you have to run the battery and the phantom power. Now you have to do this for certain mics because if you do it for other mics, you're actually going to get a lot of noise out of it. Because the buzzing from the battery. Yes, power, yeah. you're gonna get you're gonna get a. Uh, it's actually pretty clear because I've heard it before. Yep. It, it's a very distinct. Mm -hmm. sound. It sounds very yep. faint, but it's a buzz, almost like tinnitus. Buzz. Yeah, absolutely. You'll hear it. 
Uh, the difference when you're on set, sometimes you'll hear that sound. That's just white noise of the room. That's just dead air in the room. You're going to hear that. It's always no good to what. record that, by the way, for yeah. film projects. And we're going to discuss that in once we get to production too. We're going to talk okay. about the about about a good way of doing that too. All right. I learned how to do that from you watching mm-hmm. you edit. So. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, y- yes, your phantom power is that, or the microphone will have a battery capsule to charge it, to power the mic because it just needs power because there's a lot going on in that microphone to get your sound. Yeah. Okay. Inside the, um, category of condenser microphones, you have three different bands of sound. You get unidirectional, bidirectional, or omnidirectional. Okay. Unidirectional is what most people will be using on set. It is literally what it sounds like. The microphone, you point it in that direction and it's going to pick up sound in that direction and only that direction. Okay? This is the, on your Tascam and or H or Zoom H4n, it's the inner option. Of, well, the Zoom doesn't move like that. Oh, the, well, H, the, the Tascam, the Tascam moves does. inward and outward. So this is the inward direction mm-hmm. for the Tascam. Yes. Um... Because they don't really explain it that way in the no, manual. But, so. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that because I don't have that one. So I wasn't. But okay. Yeah. That's cool. That's good to know. Um, yeah. So uni, uh, unidirectional is generally what you're going to be using. All right. That is your that is your set thing. Uh, it's only going to pick up the sound that's happening in front of it. Minus the fall off of sound happening this way and echoing. All right. Anything that's loud enough behind it that echoes in front of it, you're going to hear that too. Okay. Like when you're in a large room or set. Yes. Uh, within uh, you, uh, quickly to go through the other two, we have bi-directional microphones, which will pick up sound in front and directly behind it, but cut off the sound on the sides of it. That's very good for interviews. If you have two people sitting in front of each other, you can put the microphone pointed at one of them and you're going to get sound from both of them. That's and the that's other really good. option. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. And you will get the sound in front of the microphone and in back. So you have two people and the sound on the sides drop off. Awesome. Another quick little thing. Mm -hmm. It's not always the best to do it, but when you're shooting to a two camera setup on a 180, Uh uh, you can put the, you can put a task cam in between the two shots underneath and record both, but the audio is not going to be the best either way. So it's just good just to get one and one or both. It's a decent option, but But it, it doesn't has its work. Drawbacks. Always, yeah, yeah we'll it get, doesn't always work. Uh, omnidirectional is mm, is all around. Yeah. Okay, it's a literal circle. That, Good for podcasting with uh, a, like a round table podcast. Yes, yes. You're gonna stick it right in the middle of everybody. That's what it's yeah. good for. The omnidirectionals are good when you don't know where the sound is gonna come from. If you're at a live event or you're doing like something something like that, where you can all over you don't know and you just have to stick the microphone there and try to pick up as much as possible that's what omnidirectionals are for like if we had a table if we were all sitting at a round table right yep. now and we only have opposed. one microphone yeah. perfect that's what you need for that that'll so also pick up, up the fan though it'll pick it up it will but know. depending on the microphone you're going to have a drop off at a certain distance just like this you're going to have a certain drop off where it, oh, so you can set it to like a meter yeah. something like that yeah right. I've never used an omnidirectional mic so I'm not entirely sure how it'll work or if, how well the drop off is going to go Lynn uh, do you have any questions at this point as you said you're, you are you totally don't know this so let me, uh, do you have any no I mean I want a cigarette oh gotcha <laughs> um no, I mean, I think the only thing that I want to kind of add is, you know, if you're talking about the task cam, one of the things I don't think I heard you guys explain is that there's two little microphones that are facing two opposite directions. That's the zoom. That's the zoom. That's the zoom. Oh, I'm they, sorry. That's that the they, zoom. That they kind of cross each other. He's yeah, talking they cross each other. On the task cam, the those task two cam, little mics. Yeah. They, Go ahead. They move in the in the singular direction and the and the multi. The, they're, they're you can point them in, you can point them out. Yes. Pointing them in is the unidire- unidirectional. Okay. Pointing them out does the bi-directional. bidirectional. Yes. Gotcha. And then that's it. So it, it has two options. That's two which outputs. Is, which yeah. is cool to have. Yeah. It's a very nice option to have if that's what you're if that's what you're left with. Yeah. So considering um, if my well, let's get to the production because this is a production thing I want to yeah. say. So whenever well, we get to that. Within that. Yeah. So now now once you're on set, let's say. 
ninety percent chance you're shooting. You're shooting. You're, fi- you're shooting. Of let's. We're talking films here. Are we, yeah. are we talking production yet? Because I wanted to. No, okay. we're not there yet. Cool. Uh, inside the unidirectional, you have three different types of microphone, and they're called and um, unidirectional microphones are cardioid microphones. Okay. Okay. Because the sound pickup is shaped like a heart. Cardioid. <laughs> okay. Literally. <laughs> so remember it that way. The sound pickup area is shaped like a heart so when you see the the diagram of where it's going to pick up you look for the heart all right right. imagine it that way the crease in the top of the heart is the head of your microphone so the sound actually goes a little bit down around it and in front it's a heart shape it comes to a point at the front of the microphone Mm -hmm. uh so your basic cardioid microphone has a wide pickup in front. It's good. It's very good for interviews. It's good for this sort of thing that yeah. we're doing. Podcasting is good for interviews. Um, I can't see what my note there is. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I do believe that the cardioid microphones are high in bass as well. Not ridiculously high, but you'll get a bassier sound out of them. All right. Uh, super cardioid is generally what most of your on-set mics are going to be. They're going to be unidirectional, super cardioid mics. And that is the same as that, only it's got a much narrower field. So this way, it's really only picking up what's in front of it. Um, uh, uh, That's your typical film set. Beyond that is hypercardioid. All right? Uh, Also, it's even farther narrower. That's good for closed spaces. If you're shooting in, a let's say, a bathroom, and the bathroom is very echoey on mic. You may not notice it and when you're in it, but on the microphone, all you're going to get is echo. You need a hypercardioid because it's going to isolate where the sound is coming from and it's going to drop off a lot of that echo from the bathroom. This is now, something that the task cams and the zooms are horrible, absolute yes. dog shit at doing. Yes, so yes, you got to yes. be real careful. Because of the fact the lower that, the frequency, though, that's, a, that's one is, way to, is, to suppress and, it. And on the microphones, you will generally have a little switch. And the switch will have a line or a line with a little bend in it. And that is a frequency drop-off. All right? That drop-off will remove frequencies below a certain hertz level. So this way, if you're in a room and you can hear that refrigerator going, click that little and the refrigerator, which is below a certain frequency level, it won't pick up anything under that level anymore. Okay. So when you're in a room, you hear that little sound. There's something that's just like, what is going on? There's an air conditioner running or there's a central AC. Click that and it will remove lower frequencies. And that's generally where most of building sounds are coming from you may you may not remove it entirely and we're not saying this is foolproof but it will help you yeah drastically especially with like i said the early recorders yes now the main reason those little recorders are bad at it is because they're such short microphones the microphone itself is only about an inch long yeah it's about an inch these shotgun mics are anywhere from six to 18 inches long and the longer the microphone is, the less of that noise it's going to pick up. That's what's happening inside that microphone. It's filtering through it all, all these different little things that are happening. That's why it needs a power source nice. to run through it and run the filter through all of that to remove all of that noise and to filter out the frequencies that it knows you do not want. Also, you're going to need O-rings. O-rings? To hold the mics, usually on a boom pole. The rubber bands. Oh, oh, you mean, um, oh, those are, uh, 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 oh, shit. <laughs> this. Not that our people can see it. This is, um, why is the word not coming to my head? Um, it's a thingy. Shock mount. It's a thingy. You need a shock mount. <laughs> yes, you need thingies. a shock mount. The microphone is going to sit inside of a shock mount, and this shock mount has rubber, is basically, um, it's a, it's got, it's got a, it's got a, a screw on head. All right, and what we're looking at right here, this is a this is a, this one's cost about thirty or thirty five dollars. This is a they have fail- Aventone SSM. They All have right. fail safe rubber bands in them usually. Yeah, uh, what this is is basically it's a little tunnel that has a bunch of rubber bands in it that's going to suspend your microphone inside of it, and and that suspension is going to remove any of this. I'm going to touch the. I'm touching the pole that the microphone is sitting on. And and you can hear it. And you can hear it very clearly because my microphone is just mounted straight onto the, uh, the tripod. 
Yeah. There's no shock mount here, so you're hearing this. This is what it's going to sound like. If you if when you mount if you if yeah. you use this if you don't use a shock mount that's what it's going to sound like when your boom guy is following your actors around every time he moves his you're going to hear wiggling gonna, and metal yep yeah. you're going to hear that sound so you absolutely need a shock mount and then beyond that you need either what they call a dead cat which is a brand but it's you need you need a muff a wind muff on top of your microphone it looks like a cat's tail. On your microphone. On our set, ours, we, we, we have a fucking 18-inch microphone. We call it the werewolf cock. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because it's And if 18... your eyes are really yes. good, you could actually see it in a shot in, in Blood Slaughter Massacre. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, there's, another, there's another thing called a blimp. Which the microphone will sit inside this large... It's a, it's, it looks like a big dead cat. And it's about... I'm going to say about four inches... Four inches, uh, what is a uh, diameter? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Vertically? No, like, whatever. The microphone itself is suspended inside the entire thing. So it's got two shock mounts on it inside this. All right. And it gives about two inches of space around the whole microphone giving even more ability to diffuse wind and extra sounds that are coming in. Good for it. outside. Yes, it's good for, it's good for everything really. It's really good for everything, but it's amazing for outside. If you're shooting outside, you got 20 or 30 mile an hour winds, you're not going to hear any of that because of the blimp. The blimp is going to diffuse all that sound hitting your microphone. So, you need a dead cat or a blimp. Blimps are expensive. Most most blimps they're going to cost you upwards of three to four hundred dollars. Uh, you can go on YouTube and probably some of six, seven hundred dollars. Wow. Really, shock Blimps. mounts are also minimum. I've seen that aren't garbage or like at least thirty dollars. I mean, well, that's yeah. not a lot. This but is it's the, still... the one I'm holding here is made of metal and it's got it's got two rubber bands on each side. I've used this on everything. It's very it's very good. Well, how much was it? Thirty. Thirty bucks. Oh, there you this go. This was thirty dollars. Very good. Very good uh, shock mount. So uh, so you can let's, find let's that cheap. Price. Let's price because we're about to get into production. So like yes. let's price this down. Okay. So a task cam or or an h4n or or a zoom of any kind a recorder that in my opinion if you have no money you should start out with something like this and a wind a wind muff a good wind muff it's going to set you back about 175 to 250 dollars for the now recorder. how would how would a cheap but usable setup cost so we got the the pole for like 110 yeah and then i'm what would you suggest microphone wise? Like honestly, for someone who has next to no money, uh, I cannot remember the name of the one, but uh, I know for a fact uh, there is the microphone that uh, Chris Grillo uses. Uh, he got a set of two of them because it, it's a stereo microphone set. So it's supposed to, you're supposed to mount the two of them next to each other. So you have one left and one right, and you get a good thick stereo sound but he doesn't use it that way he uses it singular yeah. and he runs it uh he runs it as mono sound rather than stereo all right and he got the set of two of them for about fifty dollars okay so and he gets great sound out of them because it's all about when you're in production how you record and we'll get to that all right so 110 for the poll mm -hmm. 50 bucks Minute, like yeah. on average, well, fifty to seventy five. That's for that. That's yeah. for those mics themselves. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, your average, you're gonna run about a hundred to three hundred dollars for a mic. You want to get a really high end. You're gonna go. You're gonna again. Mine was yeah. seven hundred bucks. All right, so we'll say like a hundred. So that's yeah, two. You can get two a ten shock mount thirty bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, werewolf cock. Another. How much is that? Well, the one again for mine. Not for the blimp. Like we're thinking. No, no, cheap no. Here. Even mine. No, the he, one for mine. I have. Inches. I have an eighteen inch microphone. So that eighteen inch dead cat was about one hundred and twenty five dollars. All right, so we'll say like seventy five bucks. Yeah. So you're looking at three hundred ish. Yeah. If you actually, you know what, you want to be, you want to be real frugal about it. You go on YouTube and look for how to make a blimp. Mm -hmm. Make a microphone blimp, and they'll sh and you can find a tutorial of how to make it out of uh, 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 what is it? It's a dry the dryer tube. Take the wire out of that, wrap it in chicken wire, and then <laughs> go to Michael's, get some furry uh, material, and make it yourself. Cost you about thirty bucks tops. Now that's tops. just that's just the microphone setup. Let's talk yes. about an okay mixer. At that point, uh, not even like not the thirty dollar right. piece of garbage I'm you not gonna, used at I'm, first, but yeah, like I'm not even going to say mixer. Forget a mixer for now. So Forget what do you run the microphone through then? The, not your camera. No, run it right into the recorder. Keep that recorder and record through that. What a Zoom or a yep, Tascam? Absolutely, okay. it's just a recorder. 
It's just a recorder. It's going to pick up whatever the microphone picks up. So a matter, so the recorder itself is not going to alter your audio at all. It's just recording directly what's so, coming in. So keep that, keep that task cam or that zoom and hook your microphone directly into it. And then from that point, make sure you have a good XLR cable. So you're looking at, if you want to get good with the sound, you're looking at five hundred dollars. Start with that recorder. Well, well, keep that recorder let's, until let's you. Let's slide to that note about the wires because that's an important point. Uh, yes, the wires themselves are very, very important. You can find some very cheap XLR cables, and you say this is a great freaking deal. This is amazing. I myself, I got ten XLR cables. These that you're looking at right here, they're fifteen feet long each. I got ten of them for thirty dollars. Fuck, that is an amazing, amazing deal. And that's awesome. But we're using them for this, sitting here, not moving. I've taken and them. And they still suck, right? And they still suck. Yeah, there you, you go. You saw that. When we started here, I was trying to get that head to stop buzzing. Because inside this wire is inside this, the rubber wire that you see, there's more wires inside. Oh, right? Surprise, mm. surprise. There's more wires inside. Those wires are wrapped to keep them from shocking you, to keep the electricity from running through. And, and, and they fray they extremely easily. And they do fray extremely easily. So the way the company itself, the, the materials the company itself uses to wrap the wires inside is extremely important. Okay? Um, because of the fact that if they're not insulated properly, when you're running on a set, you're going to get electro electric interference from them. Contamination, yeah. Yes, you're absolutely going to get that. Uh, you're the, the 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 jack heads will get Jack's disease, as we always know. Your headphones eventually that jack goes that jack starts to you get one earphone working and you keep messing with that wire. This will happen to your XLR cables. Also, XLR cables have this lovely tendency of ruining mixers because that jiggling mm -hmm. loosens the yep. port and yep. fucks your entire. Absolutely, you could buy. Uh, Manny had this happen with his last recorder. Where did you ever fix that? What the the recorder we used to record out of? No, nope. Yeah, there you go. Tell them about that because that's exactly it. what I'm talking about. Never fixed it because because of the cheap wires that were running into it. It hurt the jack itself. It hurt the actual input jack. Yeah, the on port. It, yeah. the port on the recorder, and there is a constant electric buzzing coming through, coming cracking. Yeah, here. constant. Our old Mario Lex Movies podcast. You can hear it in some of the actual. Mm -hmm. Yep podcasts yep. you can hear and the it, little cracks yeah absolutely and it's there and you can't get rid of it and, and that was an and expensive it, recorder uh wasn't about, it? about 350 yeah yep and now that recorder that's it can't use it anymore it's a paperweight it yep. is it's a paperweight so so wires are very important wires are very important because Spend on the top of that extra too, couple of bucks you're yeah. also talking about condenser microphones which as we said they need power source so there is power running into the microphone through that wire and sound running out of the microphone. So you have a cross current of of electricity running inside this wire. So the wrapping inside of it is extremely important. Uh, there are other companies, there are companies out there that make very good, uh, insanely good wires. Um, I know Monster Cable, people say it's very overrated, but they're over expensive. They're, they're very expensive because they send, spend a shit ton of money on marketing and everything. But it's 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 they're reliable. And yeah. if something goes wrong with it, if if you get the jacks disease on it or the wire, sent lifetime replacement. Something goes wrong with that wire, you may be spending forty five fifty dollars on that six or eight foot cable. But if something goes wrong with it, you send it back to them. They will send you a new one. Well, there you go. Yeah. So keep that keep that little thing that comes with it. I say go with Monster if you know a professional sound person, a guy who works, somebody who works in a sound studio. Ask him what XLR cables he uses. The ones that they're going to attach, they're going to hook into their mixer, and they're going to run it behind a wall, and it's going to sit there for the next ten years. Ask him what he's using because those wires have to have to last him for a long time. Yeah. Okay. So now with production. Okay. Well, no, before we go into production, I just want yeah, to throw a real quick thing in to pray. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can, do a sound, do a location scout, bring your sound guy along with you. Um, and I'm not talking like it has to be a formal location scout. I mean, yeah. if you're shooting in your Auntie Della's, uh, you know, house, go visit Auntie for a, for a little bit. Take your sound guy, have him walk around the rooms, check for yeah. any interference. Take your sound guy with the sound, with your exact sound setup that you're going to have. 
Oh, yeah, like literally have him walk around to check it for, uh, you know, the electric interference. Contamination. You know, you're going to check around the outlets. You're going to check around the light switches. You're going to I watch a lot of ghost (laughs) shows. I know that word very well. Contamination. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Electromagnetic contamination, yeah. Um, And then the other thing you want to do, which will save you a lot of time on set, which time is money, um, literally have him set his settings there, right there in the room. room. Each room you're going to shoot. When bands record music... You, in a studio, they usually tape down yep. their knobs for tone, so uh-huh. they never lose whatever setting they have for yep. the, whatever song they're mm-hmm. recording. So yeah. take your sound guy, go to the set, walk into each, wherever you're going to be shooting, walk into it, and test the sound in there. So sometimes you're going to get a lot of echo, so he's got to he's got to move. Now, unfortunately, with these recorders, you don't have much of an option. The option is very limited of on coming, that kind of yeah, stuff. Of yeah, of your EQ. It's very limited on there. But the very least, let so let's, for argument's sake, let's just say we're we're using that recorder with with your microphone. Walk around the rooms, take your mic, put it up against the walls, check the plugs, check the light switches, the fans, and see if you're getting any interference from them through your wire. And it'll wire. be buzzing, so you'll know. Yes, it'll exactly. be very obvious. If you're doing obvious. it yourself, it's very obvious. It'll be very obvious. Check them. So this way, your sound guy knows the areas of the room to avoid in the first place. I did a set. I did a, I did a shoot once. And I was sound guy for this for the set, and I'm hearing it. And it's it's an old building in Brooklyn, and I'm hearing as I get, I'm holding uh, in in the in the scene the the actors are on the bed, and I'm holding the mic over the bed, and the closer I get to the ceiling, the high the louder the buzzing is getting. So I start moving, and I go down this way, and I'm trying to get to the side of them, and I next and and they're on the bed. The bed's obviously up against the wall. As I get closer to the wall, more interference. As I go to the door, more interference because the wiring in the building is just shitty. It's and so old. old. Yeah. And yeah. old. Yes. And I'm using this cheap ass wire. And because of the lack of insulation inside that wire, I'm hearing the electromagnetic interference coming from it. And we were literally, uh, at some points, we were literally relegated to a four foot radius section in the center of the room where I got <laughs> no interference. And I couldn't even extend the boom pole because the wire running into my setup, me, the wire, and the mic had to be crammed into this little four foot space. Because as soon as I stepped out of it, the, the walls, were, yeah. I was going to start to get a slight buzzing. So it is very important to worry to get yourself good wires. Very important. All right. And you'll save yourself, you'll save yourself a lot of hassle you if will. you just yeah. go early, just, go a day early, go it. just check it. And and again, sound is only it's supposed to only be thirty percent of your movie, but it's, it's honestly the besides the actual movie itself, it's super ultra it's important. important. It's probably the most important thing. It's the most important thing. Yeah. I, I, I subscribe to that belief. It is the most important thing. Pay attention to your sound. Yeah. And it's always an afterthought. We've all made all this. We've like every, all, all three of us have all, made this mistake. Every filmmaker does it. Every Trust us. Them. Please. If you're going to put $500 yep. into anything, yep. put it into your sound. Yep. Hey guys, so I'm going to cut this off right there. Our sound episode ran a lot longer than we expected, and we recorded almost two hours worth for this episode. So uh, just in the matter of keeping things kind of consistent, and so I'm going to cut this off right here, and uh, we'll, we'll, up, we'll upload the second half soon, uh, possibly next week. I might even do it a second, second piece this week where we cover... Uh, production and post-production of sound. We're going to discuss a checklist of things to run through when you're on set, the things to look out for, how to improve your sound while you're filming uh, foley and room tone and all things like that. And then in post-production, we're going to discuss some of the editing programs you can use and a couple of things, uh, uh, where where to find, how to do some foley, how to uh, record. Uh, So look forward to that coming very, very soon. Uh, Thank you for listening. Subscribe to us uh, from ma- at massgravepictures.com. You can record, you can download all of our episodes, and um, subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play, and also on YouTube where we have video versions of this. Uh, we're not exactly on them, but you can watch it on YouTube as well. It makes it a whole lot easier for some people. So thank you for listening to the Filmmaking Sucks podcast. Email us at filmmakingsucks at gmail.com if you have any questions, concerns, possibly subjects that you want us to cover, any sort of any sort of problem that you had while you were on set that you encountered and you want to know how to fix it, we'll try our damnedest to help you out. So thank you all for listening. Good luck and make good films.